tonight on 2020. The Naked Truth. Summer sun, beach, bodies, and beauty. Can you get ahead without it? Look at it. How far would you go to look great? You're showing a foreign object into somebody's mouth. The latest diet craze or just crazy? The tongue patch. My tongue hurts talking about this. I think it's ridiculous. Hold your tongue. And what if you could look like Hugh Jackman without having to get jacked? This could be you, right? Wives, this is for you. Hey, baby. How to take your hubbies from flab to fab in just 60 minutes with no exercise. Extreme fake over. Plus, what if your beauty cost you your job? Her only crime was looking too good. Fired for being too tempting to her dentist boss. So you're responsible for your boss who can't control himself. Open up and say, Melissa. You're fired. Too hot to work? Tonight, we're letting you in on the Naked Truth. Here's Elizabeth Vargas. Good evening. David Muir is off tonight. What more friends, more money, even more sex? Then research says be better looking. It is the naked truth of lookism, especially during these stripped down summer months. In fact, just this week, a New Jersey judge ruled that some Atlantic City casino waitresses, the so-called Borgata babes, could be legally fired for putting on weight. So how to lose it? Just take a look at the newest diet craze that might have you saying, hold your tongue, literally. Here's Cecilia Vega. From the surgical, think liposuction, stomach stapling, and the lap band, to scary, like the cotton ball diet. I've heard of people eating the cotton balls with the orange juice, and it makes you think you're full, but you're not. To the downright disgusting, that's not a jar of noodles. It's the main ingredient in the tapeworm diet. Everybody looks like they want to vomit. You dine out, while the parasite dines in your digestive tract. There's seemingly no limit to the lengths people will go to lose it. And if you thought the story we brought you last year about the feeding tube diet was extreme, I'm down two dress sizes. Well, wait until you see this. I am determined to lose weight. I'm willing to do anything at this point. I'm so desperate to lose the weight. These two women are about to have a piece of hard plastic mesh sewn onto their tongues. It will inflict pain if they try to eat any solid food. Marlene Beltran weighs 169 pounds because of her out of control appetite. I get like cravings. Like in the middle of the night, I'll just be like, oh, I want a brownie or I want ice cream. This time I'm just really motivated because I am almost 21 and I do have plans and I want to look my best and feel good. I love eating everything. Lysander Lanuza is 200 pounds of all you can eat. American food, Filipino food, Korean, it's heaven. Their goal is to each lose 20 pounds in one month. Marlene wants to begin dating. Lysander has a bikini and a deadline. In a month's time, um, I'll be going to Hawaii. I'll be wearing this bikini and I'll hopefully I'll be looking great. So this is our patch and we put it right on the interior portion of her tongue. It's called the tongue patch. Cosmetic surgeon Dr. Nicholas Chagay introduced the procedure in the U.S. four years ago after first seeing it done in Latin America. I thought, you know, this is a good way to help people lose weight quickly. The first stitch is already in. I'm just going to put four knots on it. Make sure it stays in there. He said the way it works was if you eat solid food, your tongue rolls back and it would cause pain. Shagay says Lysander is his 81st patient as he pioneers the process here in what is arguably the plastic surgery capital of the country, Southern California. But that's nothing compared to body-conscious Venezuela. One clinic in Caracas has stitched patches on more than 800 tongues. Is the goal of the tongue patch so that your tongue hurts when you go to swallow food? It's a pattern interrupt. When patients want to swallow food, they realize, hey, I cannot do that. That's why I have this patch here. So it reminds them. But you're sewing a foreign object into somebody's mouth. Is that healthy? Well, it's not unhealthy. Hey, 
The surgery is all finished. Wow. I can't find my tongue. <laughs> She'll be able to speak normally in a few hours when the anesthetic wears off. But all that greasy fried food she loves, forget it. It's a strict 800 calorie per day liquid diet of bad shakes and low cal beverages until the patch is removed in one month. How much weight are you guaranteed to lose with a tongue patch? I, don't, I cannot say that you are guaranteed, but an average weight loss is anywhere from 18 to 20 pounds in that one month's time. 18 to 20 pounds at a cost of $2,000. Seem hard to swallow? Maybe. Lysander is paying full price, but Dr. Chagay is doing Marlene's procedure for free because we are recording it. I was told that food gets stuck on the patch too, so even if you want to cheat a little, you get caught because it gets My stuck. tongue hurts talking about this <laughs> with you. No, I'm not, I'm not nervous about the pain or anything. I'm kind of excited. On the morning of her appointment, Marlene is more concerned about organizing all the clothes she hopes to soon be able to wear. Okay, so these are all jeans. Like these see. are still brand new. They have the tags on. Oh. Did you buy them thinking you were going to fit into these at some point? Yeah, I did. And then I'll, once they didn't fit, I was just like, oh, I'll lose the weight and I'll fit into them. That never happened. You ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Stick your tongue out for us. Good. Perfect. Dr. Shigay reminds her that, as of now, she's on that same low-calorie liquid diet. And three times a day, you start taking that, OK? Uh -huh. And no cheating, <laughs> and no Twinkies. Uh -uh. After only 10 minutes, the Stay patch right. is in place. Good girl, all done. What's it feel like? <laughs> I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> that seemed pretty easy. It, it was quick. You don't feel it. You don't feel it. Mm -hmm. Have you ever received any flack from pr colleagues in the medical community for this? No, I haven't. Dr. Shigay, meet Dr. Christine Petty. I think it's ridiculous. And Dr. Rob Heizenga. I think it's a barbaric procedure. She's also a plastic surgeon. I could never advise a procedure that would cause a patient pain. Pain is not a good thing for anybody. Start today. Better known as Dr. H, he specializes in long-term weight loss, spending 14 seasons as an expert on The Biggest Loser. This is so primitive an approach. You could hire somebody to hold a gun next to your head and threaten to shoot you every time you eat. You could have somebody with a hammer hit you over the head every time you threaten to have something to eat. Would you do this on your own body? If I would. You haven't done it on any of your family members, have you? Well, so far, no volunteers. <laughs> when we come back, what is it like living with a mesh patch stitched to your tongue? 30 days on America's most extreme diet. And I want a burger, really bad, a cheeseburger. Will one of these women wish they had never done it? I don't care if it's a bite, I just want a burger. And will the weight come off? Stay with us, the results may surprise you. Twenty twenty returns with the naked truth. They say no pain, no gain, but this is turning that phrase on its tongue. Two overweight women who can't control their eating, going to extremes to lose weight fast. A stiff plastic patch stitched right to their tongues will inflict a sharp pain if they try to eat any solid food. How do you feel? I feel good. My tongue is all swollen. I can't call. It doesn't fit me anymore. Lysander Lanuza, I'm a sucker for fried tacos, and Marlene Beltran each hope to drop 20 pounds in 30 days. After you get this tongue patch, you'll be able to wear these shorts? Yeah. Tracking the difficult diet in video diaries along the way. For Lysander, day one brings an immediate challenge. This is what my mom cooks for breakfast, which I obviously can't eat. Instead, I'm also doing my workout right now. She cheerfully begins the requisite 45 minute daily exercise routine. But Lysander's social life is all about food. And day one brings another temptation. So, this is my first dinner out with my friends. She sips iced tea while her friends gorge on a buffet. Mm -hmm. 
Mmm, yummy. So today's Father's Day, and this is what we have to serve at the table. Barbecue. Fish. Fish. I cannot eat any of that. <laughs> but I can eat this. This is a Diet Pepsi. So far, so good. Okay, to their scale, I've lost three pounds. But across town, Marlene has a craving for just about everything. It's crazy because I don't like beans. Never liked them, won't eat them. But today, just looking at my mom eat beans made my mouth water. By day five, this food junkie has a bad need for a fix. Lately, I've been craving an in and out burger, like, really bad. And I want a burger really bad, and cheeseburgers, and cheeseburger. I don't care if it's a bite, I just want a burger. Somehow, Marlene resists her cravings. Lysander, not so much. Well, I tried, like, a piece of popcorn we were at the movie theater, and it hurts, so I'm like, forget it. The popcorn <laughs> hurt. Yeah. And are you thinking, yes, it's working, I don't want to eat. <laughs> no, I'm like, it does work, I can't eat. <laughs> Dr. Nicholas Chagay claims the miracle of the tongue patch is that it can act as a jump start to lasting weight loss. It's really a life-changing type of a pattern. And it takes about 30 days to change a habit. A small patch that can be life-changing. Life-changing, exactly. If I could say one thing, it's that the whole concept of jump start is absurd. Weight loss expert Dr. Rob Heizenga points to studies that show how most extreme dieters who lose weight rapidly eventually gain it all back and more. There's not one scintilla of hope or evidence that putting a patch on your tongue and, and not being able to eat for a month is going to have any effect on you at one year or two years or three years. Dr. Shigay's son and partner, Dr. Paul Shigay, did submit a study that claims 70% of their patients lost an average of 16 pounds and kept it off for eight months. But the American Academy of Cosmetic Surgery won't publish it without more data. No matter. Marlene is getting all the data she needs from her bathroom scales as the pounds fall away. My double chin isn't as bad as it used to be. My arms are a lot thinner. Lysander is also watching the pounds melt away. So far, probably lost 15, 16 pounds. I'm getting a lot more attention from guys, which is nice. I'm like, it's attention I'm not used to, so I'm kind of still kind of adjusting to it. It doesn't hurt, does it? Finally, Liberation Day. That's it. I feel liberating. Yes, isn't that <laughs> liberating? <laughs> now, that wasn't so bad, huh? No, you don't even feel it. The final tally? Marlene loses 18 pounds. Remember those skinny jeans she couldn't wear before? Now they're kind of big on me. <laughs> Lysander loses 23 pounds. And that bikini she wouldn't dare try on before? Aloha Lysander. Once they take the patch off, we put them on a boot camp diet. It's a strict diet for another month. And then I prepare them for the regular maintenance diet that they'll stay on for the rest of their lives. Or not. As hard as it was to live with the tongue patch, will it be even harder to keep the weight off without it? I was sad the patch was coming off just because I felt like the hard part began, like, now I'm on my own. Really, I don't want to go through that again. It was really hard for me. Okay. I agree to the fact that it is really an extreme measure of losing weight. You do think it's extreme? Yes, I do. Is it crazy? Yes, I think it is. I mean, comparable to the other diets that I know, yes, it is. Clearly, Lysander, who paid $2,000 for her tongue patch, is not nearly as happy as the person who got it for free, Marlene. It wasn't bad. Look at you, you're smiling. Like, I'm, like, I would do it again. Like, it was fun. The tongue patch is like kind of addicting. Like, you lose the weight and you see the results fast, so you want more. So if you needed to lose the weight, would you undergo something as extreme and painful as the tongue patch? Let us know on Twitter using the hashtag ABC2020. Next, fired for being too tempting to her dentist boss. This was a woman who did nothing to get herself fired, except bring her breast to work. So is he happy when we try to track him down? Twenty Twenty returns with the naked truth.
When you go to the dentist, you want to know that he is focused on your teeth, not on his attractive young assistant. But in our next story, one dentist says he was so distracted by her beauty and the temptation she brought to his marriage that he fired her and a court backed him up. Here's Paula Ferris. Well, the cat's out of the bag. The beautiful get all the breaks. The pretty get all the perks. And the gorgeous get all the gigs. Look at the waitresses. Yeah? It really ticked off Elaine in this classic Seinfeld episode when she thought this diner would only hire well-endowed waitresses. You know what? That's discriminatory. Turns out it wasn't lookism, it was nepotism. They're my daughters. <laughs> it wasn't so funny more recently when teen clothing retailer Abercrombie and Fitch CEO Mike Jeffries caused a plus size controversy over comments they only go after the attractive all American kids. And that's why they hire good looking people in their stores. Amid plummeting sales, Abercrombie had to backtrack. But beauty bias can cut both ways. I'm Melissa Nelson. I was fired because my boss thought I was too attractive. Which brings us to Ford Dodge, Iowa, and their fields of opportunities. America's heartland for some twisted matters of the heart. All she ever wanted to do was be a dental assistant. Steve is Melissa's high school sweetheart. They're married with two young children. She wanted to work for Dr. Knight's office, so she job shadowed there. She got a job there, and it just everything fell into place. She loved her job. 33-year-old Melissa was the dental assistant for Dr. James Knight. By the dentist's side, eight hours a day for a decade. It was a fun working environment. How did you view Dr. Knight? I viewed him as a father figure, as a, as a dad. He was your mentor, right? Very much so. How close did the two of you get? When we had both of our kids, his family came and visited him in the hospital. Melissa says it was all a gas until the doc started pulling more than teeth. Once he hit 50, she says he was working out, pumping iron, and getting buff. He became more confident and more outgoing. Do you think he was going through a midlife crisis? That's the only thing I could come up with. The two had a friendly relationship, trading personal text messages during off hours. But then Melissa says it went from cordial to creepy. He would ask me about my personal life. He would ask me how often I would have sex. And Melissa says when she answered and implied not that often, the dentist offered this artful analogy. That's like having a Lamborghini in the garage and never driving it. And he warned his mentee, if you see my pants bulging, you'll know your clothes are too revealing. This was Melissa's standard issue scrub suit uniform and occasionally on humid days, her lab coat was removed, revealing her five foot one inch frame and a simple crew neck t-shirt. Oh, oh my God. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a squirter, Dale. It seemed to us strikingly similar to this scene from the movie Horrible Bosses. Shabbat shalom, somebody circumcised. Did you flirt with him? No. So there's no attraction? Absolutely not. Did you do anything to lead him on? Never. You must have done something. I don't know what. I showed up for work every day. Melissa says she brushed off her boss's comments for six months, hoping they would stop. But things came to a head when there was an exchange during non-business hours. The dentist's wife caught them texting each other while he was on vacation and made sure it would end. His wife came in with a purple folder and just sat it on his desk and walked out without saying anything. Thus began a day at this dentist's office with more discomfort than a string of scheduled root canals. Talk about intervention. Dr. Knight even brought in his local pastor. I found out later that it was his minister from church. It's his pastor, it's you, and it's Dr. your Knight. boss. Yes, the three of us sitting in an office. Did you think what the heck is going on? Absolutely. I had no idea why it wasn't there. And in that purple folder, a pink slip. Dr. Knight said I couldn't work in the office because he was 
becoming attracted to me and not able to focus on his family and his family life. What was your reaction to this? He can't control himself? I instantly broke down in tears. All I remember is just sitting there and not able to get up, telling him that I love my job. Melissa's husband rushed to the dentist's office. I said, what's, what's going on? Is there, is there a mistake? He said, I've got feelings for your wife and it's affecting my family. And he felt the best option to save his marriage was to terminate Missy as he, he saw her as a threat. He told me several times that he said, I want you to know, Steve, that your wife has done nothing wrong. When he said he didn't feel like he could control himself and that an affair might start down the road, what was your reaction? I'm like, that's absurd. Why would those thoughts even cross his mind? This is my wife. Why is he thinking of her as an object? And it, it infuriated me. And the news also infuriated some in this close-knit reserved town of 25,000 people. We met Ruth and Jerry Hancock at the local malt shop Nettie's. I have just never ever seen her do anything inappropriate myself. And then all of a sudden we find this attraction as being a, a reason uh, to let her go. I don't think that that's justified. After the firing, they found a new dentist. Now, Dr. Knight offered Melissa a month's severance for 10 years of stellar work, but Melissa vowed to fight tooth and nail. The good news for the court is this might be the easiest case that you have all year. When we come back, how Melissa decided to retaliate in a court of law. This was a woman who did nothing to get herself fired, except, you know, bring her breasts to work. The dentist's surprising defense, and as an orthodontist might say, brace yourself, because you may not believe where else she took her case. You open up and say, Melissa. Stay with us. Twenty twenty returns with the naked truth. Ever thought you could be too good looking for your own good? Thirty three year old Melissa Nelson didn't either. But she was fired from her job as a dental assistant with a month's severance after 10 years, simply because the 54 year old dentist she worked for found her irresistibly attractive and a threat to his marriage. I'm sure you remember the song, I'm Too Sexy. Well, it seems it's actually possible to be too sexy for your job. What was life like when you were working for him? It was good. I was home with my kids every night. We had just bought some land and I made the first payment and lost my job two days later. I've read lots of comments of people who say, good for him, at least he was honest. A lot of men would have just slept with her. Paige Fiddler is Melissa's attorney. I can assure you there's about a snowball's chance in hell that would have happened. Seeking damages and lost pay, Melissa took her cause to the Iowa District Court in August 2010 and filed a gender discrimination suit against Dr. James Knight. But the judge dismissed the case before trial. I was hurt. I think more than anything, I, I was hurt. Dr. Knight declined our repeated requests for an interview, but his attorney told ABC News she was not terminated because of her gender, but to preserve the best interest of his marriage. We had admission after admission after admission from the defendant himself that her sex played a part in his decision. So in December, Melissa appealed to the...
Iowa Supreme Court. We are not allowed to discriminate against someone because of who God made them. Having breasts is pretty, pretty closely connected with, with being a woman. But the seven justices ruled that although the one month's severance was rather ungenerous, terminating an employee is okay, simply because the boss views the employee as an irresistible attraction, especially since the wife felt her marriage was threatened. So you're responsible for your boss who can't control himself. That's what, kind of what the Supreme Court has led us to believe. I don't think the law is out of touch. I mean, this guy is a jerk but being a jerk is not illegal. Elia Shapiro is a senior fellow in constitutional studies at the Free Market Cato Institute. You can fire someone for being tall, for being short, for cheering for the wrong team, for wearing the wrong color. But you cannot be fired if you're part of a protected class, such as gender, race, or religion. Still, Shapiro says Melissa's case is not about gender. He's a man, she's a woman, He's attracted to her. How is it not a gender issue? She was fired because he felt that their relationship was affecting his marriage. All he had to do was control himself. How hard could that be? Well, he feared that if he kept her on, then he might start harassing her. He might start harassing her? He said, how often do you have orgasms? And if you see a bulge in my pants, it's because your clothes are too tight. Well, it's inappropriate, but she didn't complain. The court agreed, but in the court of public opinion, the ruling surprised and stung. Her only crime was looking too good. Bosses can legally fire any employee they see as an irresistible attraction. If a man is saying that a woman is so irresistible that he's afraid he will sexually offend against her, what does that say about women in the military? What does that say about, about equality in any workplace? Rika Basu wrote a scathing column for Iowa's Des Moines Register, calling the seven male justices' decision embarrassing. I think a female justice working through her own first-hand experience and perspective would have had a different take on it. Melissa filed yet another appeal, and in a surprise just last month, perhaps because of the public outcry... Can I just say that this dentist here. needs a little Novocaine in Mr. Happy. The high court agreed to reconsider their earlier ruling, a rare occurrence. But the same seven justices came up with the same ruling, clarifying that you can be fired because the boss's spouse views the relationship as a threat to her marriage. Melissa is out of legal options. She thinks it's laughable a jury of her peers will never get to decide if she was wronged. So naturally, she brought her case to Comedy Central. Melissa wants to clean teeth. She shouldn't have to worry about her boss's dirty mind. That's why I invited her to give me an oral exam in Hollywood, where women are never objectified. This is the standard issue scrub suit and lab coat she wore to work. But this is the outfit she wore on Tosh.0. Oh. Yeah. Dancers come to the stage, open up and say, Melissa. Good for her. I think it was her way of saying how ridiculous these allegations about her were. He called you the best dental assistant he ever had. Why haven't you gotten back into the industry? I think my biggest fear is trusting someone, trusting somebody that I have to work that close to. I wouldn't want to be hurt again. Today, the former dental assistant who, by day, was earning a good salary with benefits, has lost her livelihood. Now, scraping by on tips, she's waiting tables at a sports bar by night. It's not an easy job. Um, very demanding, always on your feet. But she's lost something else, even more important to her, precious time with her children. What is life like now? I tuck them in two nights a week. That's it. Do you ever see Dr. Knight around town? No. That's his lawyer. He comes in and eats the restaurant that I work at. And I can either pick my head up and go with it, or I can walk away with my tail between my legs. And I'm, I'm not going to let that happen. So, was the dentist courageous for protecting his marriage, or does he deserve a kick in the teeth for what he did? Let us know your thoughts using the hashtag ABC2020. We'll be right back.
Next, want to turn the man in your life into Hugh Jackman without them having to exercise? We got some work to do. We put our fitness fakeover to the test. Lights, camera, baby oil. Don't hate him because he's gorgeous. Hugh Jackman, we know he works out like crazy and suffers for months at a time to get into shape to play Wolverine. But does it have to be that hard for everybody? Well, yes, unless you know the tricks of the trade. So we put them to the test. Could nothing but some baby oil, a razor, and a very good photographer turn your fat into fit? And with this, we would like to welcome our new nutrition and wellness editor, Dave Zinzenko, to 2020. Nice, perfect. Go on, ladies, feast your eyes on him. Hugh Jackman, fitness icon, box office superstar, and this month's Men's Fitness Magazine cover model. Hey, baby. We know you've probably wondered what it would be like to wake up next to the boy from down under. Looking good. Or thought, why can't my husband have Hugh's rock-hard Aussie abs? While you were dreaming, consider this. To become this summer's ultimate sex symbol Wolverine, Jackman put on 25 pounds of lean muscle, ate all natural foods for six months, and scarfed down 6,000 calories a day. Look over your shoulder to the right. Yeah, that's perfect. There's definitely a lot of bit, a lot of diet, a lot of training. Drop the arm down. The Fitness model Ryan Hughes says getting amazing abs and broad shoulders requires hours in the gym, but warns there's a whole weight loss industry out there that claims you can go from flab to fab in no time. You're always going to have people trying to take shortcuts, but the bottom line is to get real results, you need to put in the time. Okay, maybe some of those amazing weight loss ads are legit, but Andrew Dixon says buyer beware. The Los Angeles-based trainer recently set out to prove how easy it is for the pumped-up weight loss industry to fake us out with those too-good-to-be-true before and after photos. I just let the gut hang out, shaved my beard, shaved my chest, got the lighting optimal. Six-pack abs in less than 60 minutes? I decided to put Dixon's tactics to the test. This week, I hit the streets of New York with my good friend, Hugh in tow, searching for a few good men willing to take part in an instant fitness fakeover with just lights, cameras, and a whole lot of attitude. Think we could get you on the next cover of Men's Fitness? Probably not. At first, we strike out. Shirt says just do it. I'm just saying. Even this 23-year-old with a solid six-pack wouldn't play ball. Let's see what you got. I got it. All right. Thanks. Till next time. But then we saw him as if by fate. Want me to put you on the cover of Men's Fitness? You think you're up for it? Wolverine wannabe, Casey Braxton. You don't think you can look like that? Come on, man. That's your Jackman. Come on. Could we convince 33-year-old Casey to let his inner Jackman claw himself out? Yeah, I don't know about the abs, though. I like to eat too much, but I think, I think we can do it. And so, Casey was in. Sorry, Spidey. It's just not your weekend. 18-year-old Mitch Paster from New Jersey. Yeah, this could be you, right? Sure. On board too. Still, I wanted to clench this, so we head downtown to where we are all but certain to find some fat content in the trendy meatpacking district. So I spotted a friend. He's having brunch. I'm gonna try to see if he's game for this. So hey, bad. hey! <laughs> Kurt Walters from Brooklyn was enjoying his eggs Benedict until I showed up. Right. The whole idea is we're gonna <clears throat> give you a little tan, mm -hmm. oil you up, get you appropriate manscaping, and we're gonna make you look 25 pounds thinner. What the viewers don't know is that he's 50. So to recap, three guys ready to strip down, take it off, trim up, and take part in 2020's first ever ultimate fitness fakeover. Blocks away, we've arranged to take those ever important before photos. Casey, aka Wolverine, arrived first, and with a little prompting, the shirt was off, his gut glaring. Can we get a full length as well? Next up, Mitch, who quickly lost his smile. Suddenly, we lost ours too. Is that a farmer's tan he's sporting? Really sideways? And finally, 50 year old Kurt, self proclaimed artist by day, silver fox by night. 
But just like kind of like slope everything, that's perfect. Just he was like going that. to need more than a coat of paint to make right. himself camera ready. Yeah, Were we going to keep your mask on? Yes. Upstairs, the men's fitness magazine Dream Team, a stylist, a groomer, the photo director. And sticking with Andrew Dixon's edict, we gave them just 60 minutes Done. to snap those six packs. You have two bubbles. This will be quite a uh, harassment deal for me. <laughs> there were lots of touch ups. I know I only do this when I got a date. Clean ups and plenty of last minute sit ups. <sighs> Then it was time for the big reveal. An hour ago, Casey was thrilling tourists in Times Square for tips. You guys want a photo? Would all that manscaping make him a sexy superhero or our first fake over zero? <laughs> Remember, this was the before. And now here's the after. It's like the retired superhero comes back, ready to save the world. 18 year old Mitch is up next, we'll see. This fall, Mitch will be a college freshman. Yeah, that's good. And now it looks like he might just be the next big man on campus. You look really great. That is surprising. Quite wow. the deal. OK, our final fake over candidate. Keep in mind, Kurt's not so buff before. And remember, he's 50. Twist it even more around, bring your shoulders even. And here's his ageless after. I kind of in shock. They worked it, they had lots of fun with it, which was the intention, and they look good. You've done over 200 covers. What do you think's most important? Personality, confidence, visual aesthetics, being a celebrity. That'll get you on the cover of Men's Fitness. It helps. <laughs> Next, move over, Charlie's Angels. There are some new angels in town. Yes. yes, Melissa. But who are they going after this time? I feel my hand going through my wallet, <laughs> even as you speak. Coming up. <laughs> 2020 continues with the naked truth. Here's Chris Connolly. Seaside Marina Del Rey, ever a magnet for LA's affluent. Ready to dress up and raise a glass on an evening out. No surprise that mingling with the well-heeled is a high-heeled gaggle of gorgeous young women. For whom this gathering of the wealthy is a target-rich environment. But they aren't looking for a hot car or a home in the hills. They're after these rich guys' wallets, not to do well, but to do good. Make sure it's a winner. There's Christina at the front. Kristen at the board. Lindsay, too. Three one is 100. Two for 150 or three for 200. And this is a benefit for charity. So they're in sell mode. So this is only a third of the items that are out right now. While rocking their je ne sais quoi, nudging those once reluctant donors to hand over those precious credit cards and give till it hurts so good. Here we go. Do they really get these attendees to dig a little deeper? Oh, yeah. Okay, 103. What in particular led you to make such a generous donation a moment ago? Sucker for a pretty face. A trio of crusading glamour goddesses fighting for what's right. Remind you of anything? But these aren't Charlie's angels. They're the charity angels. Accelerated fundraising sirens for hire. Putting to work their IQs, their TLC, and their LBDs. I don't think the approach would be quite the same if we came in some overalls and a hard hat, but <laughs> it could. I mean, it might be a cute look. $15,000. Prying open like oysters, those bountiful billfolds, and putting the ah in not-for-profit. Thank you so much. As you can see, all of the charity angels are beautiful on the exterior, but they are far more beautiful on the interior than you can ever possibly imagine. They're beautiful, they're brilliant, and they work for her. Angels. Yes. Yes, Melissa. We're going to the Beverly Hills Hotel to raise money for the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. Model-turned-philanthropic powerhouse Melissa Nielsen. In 10 years, she's guided her Charity Angels concept to a $10 million gross while amping up many benefits bottom line. By what percentage can you increase what they would normally make at a fundraiser? 60 to 100 percent. Not 10, not 20, 60 to 100 percent. 60 to 100 percent. So how'd you like this knowledge that she brought? 
Melissa pays each of her angels a flat rate of $30 an hour. She rocks 150 benefits a year. Please, please, the charity angels are walking around right now. Open your wallets. I don't right away ask them for their money. I want to get to know them. Are you looking at that person right. just like you're looking at me now? <laughs> I feel my hand going through my wallet, even as you speak. Give me your wallet. Like, Give me your wallet. I'll, I'll spend your money. Ah, but don't confuse these girl I did.